This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 5. Coverage you can count on. Breaking now at 5, NASCAR driver Ryan Newman's race team says he's awake and speaking with doctors and family members following last night's crash at Daytona. Well, into the air goes Newman. Tonight, as fans pray for a smooth recovery. I'm just glad everything turned out to be non-life-threatening. We're looking at the safety changes over the years and the historic crash on the same track 20 years earlier. Again, in that last hour, Roush Fenway Racing gave us the update that we've been waiting for, praying to hear all day. Ryan Newman still in the hospital, but he is awake and he is talking. Good evening. I'm Martha Sigalski. And I'm Greg Wormuth. Newman was racing for the checkered flag. He was in first place when he was bumped from behind, went airborne and overturned in a shower of sparks and crumbling metal. What a scene. Now all new at five, looking deeper at the first responders and medical team who were at Newman's car seconds after the crash. And we'll speak with a family friend to learn more about Newman when he's not at the track. Our live in-depth coverage begins with Channel 9 sports anchor Joe Kepner at the hospital there in Daytona Beach. And Joe, take us through that update that we received within the hour from Newman's race team. Well, Greg, it's been about 22 hours since that wreck happened last night at the Daytona 500, and Roush Fenway Racing has only given two updates since the wreck, but both have been positive so far. Now, the latest about an hour ago said he is still in the care of doctors here at Halifax Health Center, but he is awake and speaking to his family and doctors. They also thanked everyone for their concern and heartfelt messages, but the update did not include any details about the injuries he sustained last night. The team already said that while they are serious, they are are not life-threatening. Now, it's hard to imagine the, what that experience was like for the other drivers on the track, especially Corey LaJoy, who was driving the car that slammed into the driver's side of Ryan Newman's car. Nobody is blaming LaJoy, but still a difficult moment for everyone on that track. Uh, I mean, it's almost like snapshots, uh, you know, on just small instances leading up to it and then trying to get out, you know, uh, and, and I didn't even know who I hit or where I hit him. All I saw was just smoke and then a big thud, uh, and I knew I had to get out of that thing as fast as possible because it's on fire. Now, other drivers have been expressing their concerns on social media as well, showing how close they are to the guys they compete against every week. And all of this shows also how quickly rescue crews were able to get to Ryan Newman's car and how valuable it is to have a hospital so close to the speedway. Live at Daytona Beach, Joe Kepner, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. And here's some more on that. Thanks, Joe. In 2017, NASCAR unveiled its emergency response team. According to NASCAR.com, the partnership with the American Medical Response brought a traveling group of doctors and physicians to every NASCAR Cup Series race. This is a look at the track. There is the oval. This is the infield. And on the infield, in the middle of this two and a half mile loop, there is a care center. It's filled with local ER doctors. The care center is conveniently located right there. Again, this is the track. The crash happened right through here, so he didn't have to go far, but they went ahead and took him to Halifax, which really is just across the street from the track. Now, these doctors work with the AMR team, a group of physicians and paramedics gathering together. They're actually in a chase vehicle with two NASCAR track service members and that rolling team ready to go at a moment's notice. The first to respond when something goes wrong on the track, and last night you may have seen in the video, those doctors were right there making certain that he was extricated very carefully. Now, in the last two decades since Dale Earnhardt was killed at the Daytona 500, NASCAR has made several safety changes, which might have saved Ryan Newman's life last night. The Hans device protects each driver's head and neck, and the walls around the track are now built softer to absorb the energy of a collision. In fact, safety is all the fans could talk about at the Speedway today. Oh, Lord, I hope he's all right. You know, winner and loser didn't matter at that point. You know, the safety of the guy went, you know. Absolutely. Other changes include flaps on the roof of the cars, which deploy during a crash to slow the air movement rushing across the top. And the steering wheels have been actually moved more towards the middle away from the door, a safety feature that may have also helped last night. This uh, just an amazing scene and that he's up and talking, not up, but certainly awake and talking is just amazing, Martha. Another bad crash happening on that very same track 20 years ago today. That's when Jeff Bodine's truck flipped and the vehicle was torn to pieces, but Bodine survived. Channel 9 Volusia County reporter Mike Springer is live at the Speedway for us tonight. Mike, that crash last night brought back memories of Bodine's wreck on this track 20 years ago. And Bodine tells me the last thing he remembers when that crash happened here on this track behind me was him hitting the wall 
He describes the experience like being on a roller coaster. And tonight he says he's just praying for Ryan Newman and his family. This is the 2000 crash that sent Jeff Bodine to Halifax Hospital in intensive care. He still keeps photos from that wreck. I heard noise. Never opened my eyes, never spoke, but I heard noise and I remember thinking, okay, where am I? Daytona, truck race, and I passed out. Bodine's truck flipped nine times and split apart and burst into flames during the Daytona 250. He remembers right up into the point when he hit the wall. Bodine suffered fractures to his cheek and back and had a concussion. It's amazing that I'm still here. I mean, well, it's not amazing. God bless me. God saved me. And so I'm very fortunate just to be here. He only missed 10 races before getting behind the wheel again. And he managed to race for another 12 years. Of course, up till then, everyone thought I was dead. My mom was home crying. And, but I reached up. Of course, when I did that, everyone knew I was alive. So that was, I think, uh, a God thing again. Bodine says similar memories flooded back when he watched Ryan Newman's crash at the Daytona 500 last night. When I saw that happen, I said, wow, he's he's in there tight, so let's pray that uh, he, he's going to be okay. Bodine feels it was a good sign that Newman's car stayed intact, and he hopes Newman will be able to make a full recovery like he did. We're all praying that no life-threatening injuries with Ryan, uh, but after that, we just don't know. Uh, Bodine again says that seeing that Newman's car stayed intact, unlike his car, which broke apart into several pieces, he feels is a good sign of things to come. For now, reporting live in Daytona Beach, Mike Springer, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. And I'm joined now live by Blair Miller, our Eyewitness News Washington correspondent. And Blair, we wanted to bring you in on this important story because a few years ago, you worked in Charlotte where NASCAR has its headquarters. And during that time, you got to know Ryan Newman and his family quite well. Blair, I know you've been in contact with the family. Share with us, share with the people here in Central Florida what they may not know about Ryan Newman. Yeah, Martha, I was thinking about this a little bit today. I've known Ryan and Chrissy, his wife, for about 15 years. Met them on some stories there in Charlotte. We shared a love for helping animals. You know, Ryan is as down to earth as they come. And when he's not racing cars, he's doing his job. He likes being on his farm there in North Carolina, north of Charlotte. He has this dry sense of humor that people don't always get to see on television. They have two little girls, as you all have been talking about, and Ryan just loves those girls. Our kids are about the same age, and when we've gotten them together, you see just how much he loves just being a dad. You worked with Newman on the foundation in North Carolina, helping animals. We know this is something that is really right. a big part of Ryan and his family. Can you talk a little bit about the foundation? Yeah, it's very important for both Ryan and Chrissy. Before they built that facility a few years ago, they would help animal rescue groups all across the country. At one point, Chrissy thought they really could have a bigger impact by building something where they can teach all walks of life about how to treat animals. And it really has grown to something much more where kids now go and camps are held to teach people about things that have nothing to do with racing. Ryan keeps up with the maintenance there, cutting the grass. You'll find him out there doing that. And Chrissy runs the programs and provides the direction. They've always had such passion to help and to see them now needing help it's really hard to see especially last night some very tense moments martha and blair i know you heard the news but the good news here is uh he is uh awake talking to yeah. family members in the hospital so if you talk to them please give them uh, our best and we've been praying for uh his recovery we'll talk to you in a little bit certainly will our in-depth coverage continues online right now at WFTV.com. That's right. You'll find clips from last night, what the president had to say as well about the crash, and comments from fellow NASCAR drivers. It's all right there on the WFTV homepage. But again, as we waited for good news, it appears we have gotten a nice little dose of good news early this afternoon. We'll have much more on the story throughout the rest of the